Hi, Khaki Lawyer Tate Lounsbury here, and I've been receiving phone calls from people lately who have misunderstandings about what the Child Abuse Central Index hearing is like, uh, what the consequences of being on the index are, and lots of different other issues. And I started wondering, why is it that so many people are misunderstanding uh, some of these issues with respect to the Child Abuse Central Index? And so what I did is I started looking at other lawyers' websites to see if if, if uh, what these consumers are finding on those websites is contributing to their misunderstandings. And it turns out, it looks like that might be the case. So I wanted to go over a few, a few issues that I'm, I'm seeing coming up uh, a lot in, in the phone calls that I get. Number one is people think that if a CPS social worker found the allegation to be inconclusive, that their name will be listed on the Child Abuse Central Index for 10 years rather than for an entire lifetime, and that after 10 years, their name will come off the Child Abuse Central Index. And that is wrong. Uh, that is very, it used to be that way, but that is very old law. It is not the case anymore. It used to be when a, ch when a child protective services social worker conducts an investigation into a potential, uh, into an allegation of potential abuse, uh, the social worker could say, you know what, I'm not really sure if this is abuse or not. I'm going to uh, to find that this allegation is inconclusive. It used to be that would result in your name being listed on the Child Abuse Central Index, but that has not been the case for many years. Uh, and so you only get your name listed on the Child Abuse Central Index if the social worker finds that the allegation is substantiated. Another error I see on other websites is one, web, one website, for instance, said that uh, it's really difficult to win your Child Abuse Central Index grievance hearing if the allegation against you was substantiated. And I just, you know, that's, that's sort of an odd thing to say because 100% of the people who have Child Abuse Central Index grievance hearings have had their findings substantiated by the social worker who investigated the allegation. That's the only reason why you're having a hearing is because the social worker substantiated the allegation. So that's all of them. <laughs> uh, so I don't really understand that why the lawyer would say, well, if it's substantiated, it's really hard to get off. Um, maybe the lawyer is saying that it's really hard to, to win your grievance hearing. And um, that's true. Um, but we've had lots of success helping our clients get off the Child Abuse Central Index. You can take a look at our website and we, we talk about the kind of success that we've had. And, um, and you'll see that while it is difficult, uh, we have an expectation that when we take on a client that we're going to get them off the Child Abuse Central Index. We, we expect to win. We don't always win, but we win a lot. Um, so that's the second misconception that I wanted to clarify. The third one is uh, the one website said, actually a few websites said that if you're, if you're placed on the Child Abuse Central Index, but you have a criminal case that's ongoing at the same time, then the Child Abuse Central Index grievance request that you submit will be put on hold. That's sort of true, uh, but I, it deserves clarification. If you get a letter in the mail saying that your name is placed on the Child Abuse Central Index and you submit a request for grievance hearing form to the county saying, hey, I want a khaki grievance hearing and there is a, a criminal case that's going to be filed or, or has been filed, um, the county doesn't reply by sending you a letter saying we're going to put the case on hold. Instead, they will send the county will send you a letter denying your request for a grievance hearing. So from the county's perspective, they actually deny your request for grievance hearing. They don't put the grievance hearing on hold. That's an important distinction because if you win your criminal case, it's not like the county just says, oh, okay, we're, we're back on. You know, they don't take it off being hold. They don't start again. Instead, because they've already denied the request, the responsibility would be on you. After your criminal case is done and resolved in your favor, the responsibility would be on you to go back to the county and to renew your request for a grievance hearing, the one that they have already denied. So I think that's an important distinction.
another of the most common misconceptions that people have regarding the Child Abuse Central Index is uh, they'll get this letter in the mail that says Notice of Child Abuse Central Index Listing, and they'll, they'll think that the county, the agency, wants to put their name on the Child Abuse Central Index, that, that their name is going to be placed in the future, and that the point of the hearing is to prevent the listing of their name on the CACI. And I've seen, I saw a couple websites of other lawyers that, that reinforced this misunderstanding. The reality is once you get the notice of Child Abuse Central Index listing in the mail, your name has already been placed on the index. First, the CPS agency, the Child Protective Services Agency, first they put your name on the CACI and then they'll mail you the notice saying, hey, we've put your name on the CACI already. So the point of the hearing then is to, is to try to get your name off the CACI. Another related issue is that I saw on one lawyer's website, they said that if you're convicted, uh, let's say you're prosecuted in criminal court, you're charged with a crime of child abuse. And uh, if you're convicted, if you plead guilty, if you're, once you're sentenced on the, on your, on that charge of child abuse, that as part of the sentence that the judge uh, imposes on you uh, will be a term that you be, that you'll be placed on the child abuse central index. That's completely false. I, I don't have no idea why any lawyer would have thought that, um, that doesn't ever happen. And not only does it not happen, but it can't happen. The law does not allow that to happen. Uh, the judge does not impose, the judge has nothing, no judge, none of the judges uh, in criminal court uh, have any anything to do whatsoever with the placement of your name on the Child Abuse Central Index. So that's just completely false. And the last issue that I saw on one lawyer's website is uh, the the warning that uh, the alleged victim, the, the child whom you are accused of abusing, uh, might show up at the grievance hearing and to testify against you and that uh, your lawyer needs to be prepared to cross-examine that, that child witness who is going to be testifying against you saying that you abused, that you abused them. That is not something you should ever be worried about. Uh, I've never, in all the years that I've been doing this, I've never seen uh, a child protective services agency bring the child who is alleged to have been abused, uh, bring the child in to testify against the accused uh, at the Child Abuse Central Index Grievance Hearing. It's never happened, and I, I can't foresee that ever happening. Now, who am I to say that all these other lawyers are wrong? <laughs> uh, valid question. Uh, so let me just introduce myself, which I should have done at the beginning of this video. My name is Tate Lounsbury. I've been handling these Child Abuse Central Index grievance hearings since they started. In fact, these grievance hearings didn't start until 2008. I've been helping people get off the index since before these hearings even existed. I suspect that I am responsible for getting more people off the Child Abuse Central Index than any other lawyer, maybe even any other law firm in the state of California. I've helped people get off the Child Abuse Central Index in uh, most of the counties in the state of California. I've been doing it a long time. So I hope that you, you take these, uh, these words of advice in account and that you don't have to worry about these issues going forward, that you'll have a proper understanding of what you're facing uh, after you've been placed on the Child Abuse Central Index. And you might think, uh, you might think twice about um, the lawyer that you want to hire. You know, you, you don't want to just trust any lawyer who says they do, uh, that they're a child abuse index lawyer. You want to make sure that you have a lawyer who, who actually knows what happens in a child abuse central index grievance hearing and the entire process leading up to it and all the laws that, uh, that apply in your situation. I hope that helps and I hope to talk to you soon.